Let's take a look at the molecular geometry, bond angles, and electron geometry for ICL2 minus. So we'll start with a valid Lewis structure. This is our Lewis structure, and you'll notice we have one, two. So we have two chlorine atoms, and then we have one, two, three lone pairs. So if we use the AXE notation, A, that's the central atom, that's the iodine. We figure out molecular geometry for the central atom. X, that's the number of atoms. We said we have one, two chlorine atoms. And then E, that's the number of lone pairs. We have the one, two, three. And you either memorize or you're allowed to look up and see that this is a linear molecular geometry. Let's take a look at that in 3D, help us visualize it. So the purple, that'll be the central iodine atom. Let's add our two chlorine atoms. Those were single bonded there and they spread out to be as far away as they can from each other. And then we have three lone pairs. So let's add those lone pairs in. We add one, and you can see it pushes down. Lone pairs occupy space, two, and then finally the third one. And these three lone pairs end up giving us what's called a linear molecular geometry. If we look at the bond angle, it's 180 degrees. We can hide the lone pairs and really see that molecular geometry there. Let's put them back. If we wanted to look at the electron geometry, that's where we take into account the atoms, the two atoms, and then we have the three lone pairs. The electron geometry is trigonal by pyramidal. That's when we have two atoms and then three lone pairs. Let's go back to the Lewis structure. So to recap, we use the AXE notation to figure out that we have AX2E3, which is a linear molecular geometry where we have two atoms bonded to that central atom and three lone pairs. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry, bond angles, and electron geometry for ICL2-. Thanks for watching.